Let's talk about fall splits for a second. And <laughs> when you see a hive like this, I mean, we've got two deep boxes. Look at all these bees all over the front of it. Um, let, let's just take a quick second and talk about fall splits. Um, first of all, a hive with bees all over the front of it, especially in the evening um, like this, not a huge deal. I mean, a lot of those foragers, as they're returning back to the hive, they're going to kind of hang out on the front of the hive when it's warmer. They don't want to overheat the inside of the hive, and so they'll hang out on the front, um, and that's, that's no big deal at all. When I see a lot of bees all over the fronts of the hives, number one, I'm excited, because it probably means it's a pretty strong hive. Number two, um, I will check it and make sure that they aren't just completely packed out. I mean, if I open this hive, and it's just, both boxes are completely packed with bees, I might just add another box. The bees probably aren't going to do a whole lot in that other box because, hey, it's, you know, almost September, well, this is uh, the 31st I'm doing this, so tomorrow is the 1st of September. You know, the bees probably aren't going to need much space. They're probably also not going to swarm, uh, but it'll give them some, some cooling space because September is still often hot, um, and then I'll probably pull that off in early October. Uh, but in general, you know, if you've got two deep boxes, you probably don't need to add any additional boxes this time of year. Again, if it's just totally packed out, not going to hurt to add a, a third box, and then you'll probably be pulling it off a month from now. But, um, you know, a lot of people are interested in making fall splits, and fall splits um, not a bad thing to do. Here's what I found, and this is from a southern perspective, and I, well, I've tried this in the south, I've tried this in the north, I've kind of tried it everywhere. And um, I have, you know, usually around the 1st of September, taken about five frames of brood uh, and made a split. And so a, a split with five frames of brood in it, I always give them a mated queen, and about 50% of those splits survive the winter. So for, for me, I don't want to jeopardize my good strong hives. I don't want to risk weakening them too much and then losing them in the winter. So I usually go through all my strong hives and I'll pull, you know, one or two frames of uh, bees uh, and brood out of each hive. And then I'll put those, I'll combine, combine them together so I've got one hive, a new split with about five frames of brood in it, put a mated queen in there, feed them like crazy, and about 50% make it through the winter. <laughs> and I've, I've never really been able to beat that 50% mark. So, um, that may still be worth it to you if you're really trying to grow your numbers. Um, I, I wouldn't go under four frames of brood making a split, and I wouldn't take a good strong hive and like split it in half, because now you've got two mediocre hives, and you might put them both at risk uh, to, over, to overwinter properly. So I'm going to take a couple frames of bees and brood out of all my bees, combine those together into one split with four or five frames of brood, um, and then I'll, I'll pull some honey too from those strong hives and then uh, give them a mated queen and that's my split. My, the hive I took the frames from, I'll also feed them a little bit if they need it to replenish the stores that I took from them. So one big thing is, you know, how, what should I pull some brood from it if you want to make a split? I mean, check this out. So I always love looking on the underside of the lid. It's already covered in bees. Pretty good sign. We've got bees all over the front. There's bees all over, you can probably see, there's bees all over this inner cover. Um, so, I mean, this is pretty cool, look at that. Just covered in bees, both sides of the inner cover. We've got bees all over the top bars of this hive. Um, I mean, actually, I may be putting a box on this hive. <laughs> I mean, it's just totally packed up, which is just such a good sign, a wonderful thing to see. So this hive, you know, with that kind of bee population, is going to be a great candidate for, uh, you know, pulling a few frames of brood out of if I want to make a fall split. Now check this out. I mean, this is brand new comb that they've been drawing out, and they've got bees kind of festooning on the backside, drawing out some of those outside frames of comb, which is pretty amazing uh, for the time of year it is. So we've been feeding these hives. You know, we pulled the honey six weeks or so ago, and we've been feeding them ever since. And uh, wow, this is just gorgeous. I mean, this, this top box was mostly foundation when we put it back on after we pulled honey. And, and I love doing that. You know, I love uh, when you have a really strong hive and you pull the honey off of it, 
um, you can put a, a deep box of foundation back on them and feed them and they'll draw out your foundation for next year. And that's just what these bees have done. Um, they've got this brand new drawn comb. They've got all this beautiful brood. And that's just so uh, refreshing to see because these hives were just really shutting down um, last time I looked at them because it was just so hot. I mean, and so dry. You know, a lot of them just had a couple frames of brood and now there's just so much brood. And not only is there a lot of brood, but it's beautiful brood. I mean, you've got this beautiful brood pattern. You know, we've got, I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but up, if you look at that top edge, we've actually got some pollen. It's not a ton of pollen, but next to that capped honey, you can see pollen. I'm only seeing really two colors of pollen, uh, a yellow and an orange. Anytime I'm going through a hive, I know I've said it a million times, but I'm always looking for multiple colors of pollen. I want my bees to have a diverse diet. Um, just, just, <laughs> I, I know I'm being overly enthusiastic here. We've all seen bees and brood, but just frame after frame of beautiful cat brood. I've got lots of eggs. I've got lots of larva. Um, just such a welcoming sight after that crazy hot and dry period that we had in the south. We've got our Apovar strip in here, treating them for varroa mites. And I mean, this is a frame full. You've got some cat brood, but then there's also just a bunch of eggs and larva, uh, mostly eggs. That's probably super hard to see in the video. You probably can't see it. Um, but, you know, this, so this hive, I mean, they've got one, two, three, they've got five frames of brood up in the top box alone which tells me they've, they've probably got five or six in the bottom box as well. So this hive could easily spare a couple frames of brood if I wanted to make a split, or just if I wanna give some brood to a weaker hive. And so I'm gonna kinda of remember this hive as I go through the rest of the bees. And if I've got a different hive that's on the weaker side, um, I'll probably pull a couple frames of this cat brood out of this hive and transfer it over to a weaker hive. But overall, phenomenal hive, so refreshing to see a, a, just an explosion in brood um, and finally see some pollen in the hive. Um, they've got all the food that they need. I've got, you know, I've got about uh, three, about six frames of honey up in the top box. Um, you know, if I do a quick lift up on this hive, I mean, it's, it's very heavy. So, um, you know, I might give them a little you know maybe another gallon of syrup over the next couple of weeks um, and uh, we'll see what they look like in early october but you know it's it's set up perfectly for for heading into winter